Dan here, and in this video, I'm answering a question from a fellow ENFP, one of my free freelancers who also shares my amazing gift of ADHD, which usually means that when we are fighting our own fight, when we are running our own race, we can be absolutely unstoppable. People with ADHD, when we are let loose and we can do what we do best, we are amazing. But when we get caught up in things like email, one of our ultimate kryptonites, or some kind of organization that we really don't enjoy. We can go from this superhero to the character in the back of the scene that no one even notices because we're not doing anything important. So it's really, really important to learn how to get on top of things like email because when you have your own business, when you're dealing with clients or other important communication, if you don't respond for six days, it doesn't necessarily go over very well. So I'm gonna share three strategies that when I use them, lead me to be an email superstar to the point where I can even get to inbox zero a couple times a week. Inbox zero meaning there's no emails in my inbox. I completely clear it out. The first rule, which I will fully admit I've had trouble following recently, but I'm really doubling down on and recommitting to, is to touch it once. What touch it once means is that you touch all communication one time. So if you open your inbox and you're going to look at email, you look at it and then either respond, forward it to someone else to do it, or archive it. You don't open an email, read it, and then say, I'll respond later. When you do the whole I'll respond later thing, you do two things. One, you really increase the odds that you forget about it and never respond to it. And two is you're filling up your brain with these questions that just drains your brain power, right? So say you're in the lineup at the supermarket for three minutes and you make the mistake of opening your inbox. So now you're reading an email, it asks you a question, you don't know how to respond or you don't have time because now you're at the front of the line, you're gonna be thinking about that question for the next 10 minutes when really you could be thinking about bigger things, important things, not how to respond to this one email when you're not in a position to type on your phone or to respond. One thing you can do that makes the whole touch it once a lot easier to implement is schedule times you check email in a day. You've probably heard this from people before, but if you say that you only check email at noon and 7 p.m., let's say, and actually give yourself 20 to 30 minutes or less or more, depending on how much email you have, to respond to emails at those times, you're a lot more likely to open the email, read it, answer it, and then move on. Whereas if you randomly check email every time you're trying to procrastinate something more important throughout the day, and I say this as someone who is guilty as charged on this more times than I would like to admit publicly here, if you do that, you're always going to be checking, scrolling through, responding to the odd email, and your inbox will be an absolute mess. Now, number two, personally, I'm pretty good at organizing my inbox. I have all these filters set up. I'm not on a lot of newsletters. And generally, I can get myself to inbox zero, responding to most things most of the time. But I realize that I have these lingering messages and a few other inbox kryptonites that really mess with me. And I recently figured out why. And it's because I don't know what to do with those emails. Here's what I mean is if there are certain questions you're being asked and you don't know how to respond. So for example, in my case, I'll be very transparent with what they are is I receive coaching inquiries on my website where people go to the website, dreamsaroundtheworld.com if you're curious, and they submit an interest in working with me as their coach. But there are many cases where I don't really know how to respond. Maybe the person isn't a great fit or maybe I don't have time in my schedule for a consultation to see if they're a good fit for the upcoming weeks. And so I don't really have a clear way to respond and I end up putting off responding to those emails to say my schedule frees up and I have time for a consultation or I figure out whether or not the person is a good fit. This leads to these emails that I have no action to take with. I can't archive them. I can't really respond yet and they end up sitting there. And once you have, it's kind of like that broken window theory, you know, once one window on a street breaks, the likelihood of more windows breaking, more graffiti, all that goes up and up and up. I think our inboxes are like that as well. If we leave a few emails just sitting there for weeks or months and we don't take action on them, we let more and more pile up. Where if you get in the habit of completely emptying your inbox, archiving everything at the end of a day or end of a week, it becomes easier to keep up that good habit. So what I'm working hard to do is to analyze the emails that end up clogging up my inbox and then coming up with solutions. So figuring out how I respond to the types of emails I get 98% of the time. I don't mean like creating templates, but I just mean mentally knowing what I say and how I deal with that. And when I've done that in the past, 
it works really, really well. It's really easy to get through my inbox because no matter what email I'm seeing, I know how to deal with it. Whereas if you're getting emails, you don't know how to deal with them, you don't know really what the next step is for people, it's natural, you're gonna let them build up and then your inbox will go to hell. The third strategy definitely relates to the first two and it's to be as final as possible with your emails. Let's say you get an email and you're not quite sure how to respond. Another way this comes up for me is with websites that want to host my training courses or they want me to go on a podcast or do something that I don't really wanna do. Like when I first read their email, it's not that interesting to me. But being an ENFP, I have trouble saying no to opportunities. So I kind of leave it there or worse, I'll start engaging with them and asking questions, even though really my gut instinct is like, this isn't worth my time. And so that ends up creating this whole back and forth with the person when really from the beginning, if I didn't wanna do the thing they were asking me to do from the start. So I could have just said no and been done with it, but I allowed things to drag on, which is totally an ENFP thing of not wanting to say no or be final but it really is an important habit to get into with your inbox. Along these same lines, you can make more final emails. So for example, if someone wants to set up a meeting with you, respond and say, yes, I would like to set up a meeting. I'm available on these days and I'm available on these times. So give them a few different times where they could meet with you or do something I do, which is use a scheduling software where they can book their own appointments. That's a lot better than responding to someone and saying, hey, yes, I am available to meet. And then they respond when, and then you respond a time and you see where this goes. It is not the most efficient way to do things. Recently, I posted my apartment here in Prague on a couple different sites to sublet it as me and my girlfriend Gabby prepare for some big adventures and moves in 2020. And I noticed very quickly that I received the same kinds of questions from people. A lot of them were those really stupid questions like, is it still available? Yes, I posted it 20 minutes ago. Like, what do you think happened in those 20 minutes? So to save my time and sanity, I basically put together like a 500 word template response for everyone where I explain every single thing they could possibly wanna know and then allow them to make a clear decision and commitment. And what I'm probably gonna do next, I haven't moved to this step, is if someone wants to come see the apartment, actually make them put some kind of a deposit down. Again, just protecting my time from people who are just asking questions like, is it still available? Or like, I'd like to take a look, but I really can't afford it and all this sort of stuff. So if we were to summarize these three strategies and how they go together, here's how it works. First, have dedicated time to checking your email as much as possible and try to touch an email only once. In fact, don't try, just touch an email once. Open it and respond or delete, but be final with each email. The next is know what you should be doing with certain emails, right? Create processes and systems so that when you're getting an email that maybe you received the same kind of email a few times a week, you're not thinking through what to do each and every time and wasting a ton of mental energy. And then with those emails, try to be as final as possible. Try to move things forward. Maybe use a scheduling software, maybe use some templates if that helps you, but ensure that all your communication is really moving things forward to some kind of conclusion or outcome and not just going back and forth unless you actually like going back and forth and the point of the email is to chat with people. But if the point is to get to a destination, then make sure your emails are really moving things forward and being decisive. The last thing I'll add here is if your inbox is past the point of no return, if you have 8,942 emails and you think this is absolutely hopeless, it absolutely is for you at this stage. You are not going to be able to go through all those emails. So what I would suggest is you just nuke it all. If you're in Gmail, you can select all emails, archive them, and then, yeah, you'll probably miss a few things you meant to do. You'll probably annoy a few people who you didn't respond to, but guess what? The person you didn't respond to six weeks ago is already annoyed at you and they don't expect a response. If anything, it probably looks worse to respond now than just to ignore it in some cases. So I would say archive it all, start fresh, and work from a good beginning and promise yourself you're not gonna get to 9,842 emails again and instead are going to make an effort to get to say inbox zero once a week. That is really the only hope. You can lie to yourself and say you're one day gonna respond to all those emails, but come on, we both know what's really gonna happen. So better to make a big decisive move now Get rid of them all and start from scratch using the three strategies I shared in this video. 
Thank you for watching. If you are new to the channel, my name is Dan. This is Dreams Around the World, and I publish new videos each and every week, helping you become the best version of yourself. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. If you're already subscribed, hit that bell button because you get notified. And I've been told as a YouTuber, if I don't tell people to subscribe and hit the bell, I actually get kicked off the channel. It's like a thing now. So thank you for watching. See you in the next video soon.